a result piece. <gasps> I did the singing part last time. I can't do it this time. Silly. This is the part. Where- Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the F Word Podcast, the best podcast you'll never know. I am your host, G. With me is Vass, and we have our special guest this week, because Anthony couldn't make it. Introduce yourself. Oh, hello. My name is George. Happy to be here. (laughs) George is a longtime friend of both of us. Uh, myself and Bass, but that's what I meant. And uh, yeah, I tried to get you on the last time when Anthony wasn't able to make it. That's uh, right. But it was like last minute. Uh, and then this time, thank you for coming in. Because I was like having three people instead of just two mm-hmm. most of the time. Unless I'm doing the deep dives, of course. But that's a different format altogether. So yeah, um, there's a lot of stuff. It's your first crack. Don't worry. It's not that important. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you worry about no it. No one's listening anyway. Yeah, I know. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> yeah. Just like I, I always tell people, just three jerk-offs and a couple microphones, and we make a show. <laughs> hey yo, hey yo! Uh, as you all know, and I've said before, the F Word Podcast is part of the Saskatchewan Podcast Network, which is sponsored by Connexus Credit Union. Hashtag money talk. You can go over to connexus.ca. Get your finances in order. Because tax season is on its way. This is the only, this used to be the worst time in the world. I would get super mad anxiety. And luckily, I don't have to worry about that anymore. Because being self, being self not being self-employed is actually quite easy when it comes to tax time. So, that's that. Uh, gentlemen, how's your week been? Pretty busy. Pretty busy. Pretty busy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Work. Other stuff, you know. Anything exciting? No. Can't say it's too exciting. It's all kind of mundane, as it were. But oh, we live exciting go, lives. Going through the motions. George? Yeah. I was going to say the same thing. A little mundane. A little mundane? Trying to keep busy as much as possible. What do you do in by. your spare time for the people that obviously don't know who you are? Oh, in, the spare, in my spare time? Well, I'm not a really interesting individual. I Pretty, would uh, disagree. Oh, well, I thank you. Appreciate that compliment. <laughs> um, well... I'm uh, looking for work at the moment, but I do uh, kind of dabbled into the uh, digital aspect, like digital asset space a little bit. So that's been keeping me busy. Nice. Like, yeah. what does that mean? Um, well, everyone's heard of Bitcoin, right? There you go. Oh, yeah. Boom. Yeah. The B word. The, oh, <laughs> oh, you just said the B word. <laughs> yeah. That stuff. Are you still doing that? I am off yeah. and on. See, it's weird because usually if I were to like do it, it's... Late at night, staring at my computer screen. I can't do it like four in the morning and be up all night like that, you know? Yeah. But that's when the Chinese market, that's when the Asian market is open up. That's when they wake up. And that's when they really move the money around. Okay. So that's that's like the time you kind of want to like start kind of playing around with your money, if you know what I'm saying. Okay, yeah. okay, 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 yeah. okay. But it's been fun. It's keeping me busy. It's a new, it's a new, uh, it's new technology. Yep. Um, and it's been in the space for about like 10 years now, but I swear it's... It's still brand new. It's still very brand new. I mean, if it was mm. going to die, it would have died out by now. But I mean, it's here. It's here to stay. I think I thought it was going to die out like five years ago. Mm. Right. And it's still around. Yeah. Even in when like the, because it fluctuates so much. So I think during the holidays, it was like 3,600. And then it jumped up to like seven. And yeah. then at one point it was at 10 last year. And then it's just like all over the place. Shit's so volatile. Yeah. Very volatile. But that's why so many people like I've, I've the other, most of the podcasts I listen to now, they always have Cash App as their sponsor. And I don't know much about it. All I know is that apparently you can, and this isn't even an, an ad in. for Cash App because they don't sponsor us, but like you can buy stocks in companies that are like a thousand dollars a stock but mm. you can buy fractions of them with this thing okay so it's like oh if you don't have a lot you can just buy a dollar right a thousand dollar stock and have one you know small fraction of this thing so that's new to me i never heard about that before. yeah well and it's only because lately every single podcast has 
the Cash App as one of their like sponsors. Mm. Interesting. Um, mm-hmm. But I haven't dabbled in it myself because right. it scares me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Scary and unknown. Yeah. Um, also, happy new music day. New music day. Eminem dropped the new album today. Boom. Album. Out of the new. Out of the new. Out of the blue. Oh. Um, what the hell was it? Ethan sent to me first thing this morning. I didn't Love know it was a dude. full album. I saw the video, it was Darkest a, yeah. Hour, right? Nope. Music to be murdered by. Darkest Hour is a single. Okay. I haven't That's what I'm saying. That's all I saw. I didn't know. I didn't realize he had released an entire album. Yeah. So happy music day on that. And then Royce to 5 9 also released a track himself with, who is it with? It's called Overcomer mm-hmm. with West Side Gun. Who, if you know who the artist Griselda is, he's got his crew. West Side Gun is part of the Griselda crew. Um, and Royce the Five Nine is like, I think, my favorite rapper out there. So, yeah, that was super exciting. And uh, that was awesome Sweet. to see. I haven't listened to the whole Eminem album yet. I've only listened to like three tracks. I'm waiting for it to so come far? up on Google Play. Yeah. But so far, the, those two tracks. Very good. Interesting. I always get Very those good. weird recommendations on YouTube. That mm-hmm. was one of them. Oh, nice. I wouldn't say it's weird, obviously, but like I like Eminem. Yeah. Haven't heard it yet. Yeah. You was guys like last it? Last one, Kamikaze. Yeah, oh, that okay. one also came surprisingly on like a random yeah. Friday. Okay. It like wasn't. It was. We knew it was coming, just never knew when it was coming. Mm. And then Royce the Five Nine's got an album coming out. I think it's at the end of this month, or it's coming out next month. And I'm super excited for his stuff because again, that dude's awesome. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to listening to this one because from the two tracks, I was like, oh, this is pretty good. Nice. And his last one, Kamikaze, was way better than that dumpster fire that was Revival. <laughs> I agree. So, oh, man, it's so brutal. All right. I'm not going to leave this one anymore because I've left it on my list for a while. Are you guys noticing that ever since John Wick came out, action films are taking advantage of the what I like to call the Keanu Reeves effect? And what that means is that more action scenes are featuring better hand-to-hand combat and their longer shots. Yes. 100%. They're trying to compete at the end of the day. John Wick set the bar high for everybody, especially when they realized how much time Keanu himself put into it to like learn proper hand techniques for like reloading, holding the gun. And it looked weird at first for us because we always had seen movies the other way where it's like, you know, pointing sideways, whatever, even mm-hmm. in serious movies. Mm-hmm. Um but when John Wick came out, he gave a totally different feel to it. And we were like, oh, this is different. Mm-hmm. I like it. And then you find out, well, that's the correct way to actually execute, uh, like shooting, a, whether it's a pistol, a shotgun, uh, AR-15, or whatever he had, M-16, that kind of stuff. So, yeah. You're a fan of the John Wick movies? Big fan, um, especially the longer shots. I'm, 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 I'm seeing this thing where... You know, you, you can watch Liam Neeson climb a fence, and there's like twenty t- shots in it, mm-hmm. and it's like, come on, really? <laughs> like, can we like get a nice fluid motion so yeah. we can mm-hmm. see what's going on? We're not lost in the action. Mm-hmm. I, I love it. I love it. Yeah, that Liam Neeson example is the one I've seen the most, where like they literally are counting. It's like boom, 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 because they have to have that stand and come in and show that it's actually him. And I get it; he's old. I mean, even in The Irishman, like those quote unquote beatdown scenes, yeah. you can tell it was like an 80 year old guy trying to beat, like, curb <laughs> stomp a dude on the fucking street. And it's just like, yeah. oh, De Niro, I love you. And Scorsese, I love you. But God, you should have had somebody else do that. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. But I've been noticing it more. I've noticed it uh, mostly because I saw it in The Witcher, too. Um, yeah. In the first episode, have you seen The Witcher yet? Yes. Love so it. the Butcher of Blaviken scene. There was longer tracking shots of and of more of him doing things mm-hmm. without all the edits. Obviously, it did edit, mm-hmm. but they did it in a good way that it just flowed one yeah. into the other into yeah. the other, yeah. right? Like from the moment that he threw his sword into that guy's chest and then he turned around and he popped those just five guys going. with the ard and then he kept going to the next guy. And then the fight scene with um, the Remy. I think Remy was the... That was Renfrey, right after Renfrey, Renfrey the chick. Yeah. So first he yeah. fought those dudes, and then Renfrey, the the sorceress, comes in, and they have an awesome fight scene, too. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I've noticed it more. Mm-hmm. I'm super happy that it's happening. And supposedly Robert Pattinson is going hard in the paint for Batman as well. Oh, like, interesting. Great. His Long training, shot. I don't know how the shots are going to be, but he's training real hard. Mm. So I think this John Wick effect thing is a really good thing and yeah. more... Like, even Henry, Henry Cavill was like, I want to do my own stunts. I think most of them want to do their own stunts. Tom Cruise has been doing it for years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But he's, he's like done more. Yeah, yeah, but he's also done more just stunts. Like, yeah. 
the plane thing, the Dubai thing. Like he's done these bigger pieces of like spectacle mm-hmm. on his own, which is amazing. But then you look at a John Wick where it's this concentrated fight scene that's like 10 minutes long and there's maybe four or five cuts in it maximum. Mm-hmm. Like it's living in that moment that's of those. That's difficult to do. Oh, yeah. yeah. You have to you remember know? all of those movies. That's right. That's right. Yeah. You don't like something? Even Keanu's like, you know what? I don't like this one. Let's do it again because I want to get it right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's got to be 100% so, or nothing. And in doing that, it's like it's no longer like a oh, quick uh, two-minute shot. It's 510, if yeah. not more. It's like, right. hey, we got to start right from the top. Yeah. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> Jackie Chan, great example. Same. Oh, man. Yeah, he, he used to do that too. stuff too. That's right. Yeah. And so is it more of a comeback, you think, the long shot, or is it more of a evolution of it now? Well, the fact that there have been martial artists that have done their own stunts, mm-hmm. that's not new. Obviously, right. Jackie Chan, Jet Li, like they've been yeah. doing them forever. Um, Bruce Lee, Tony Donnie Yen's been doing it, Tony Jaw. I think that I think the new thing is that they are allowing these shots to be longer. Mm. They're they're ha- like these these fight scenes have choreography of up to 20 different movements that they have to memorize and they have to go through like a dance and you're you're actually able to see the whole dance instead of just you know a cut scene to the top of their head or a fist coming in or whatever like i like jason Bourne movies Mm -hmm. but at why when you watch that first one that apartment scene although dope as fuck had a lot of cuts in it like that's true and it was very up close like even the marvel ones like they're and and a pretty much most action movies there's very few moments of where it's just sticking to one like wide screen and it's showing the actor or mm-hmm. the fighter doing a complex sequence of movements yeah you know what's my favorite long shot scene uh lord of the rings uh return uh which one was it? the first one fellowship with oh, legolas yeah. oh when, when the urukai are like rushing at him yeah. it's just a long shot of him just shooting urukai with his bow yeah four shots just boom mm. boom 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 like oh it's gorgeous and it just stayed there yeah. you mm-hmm. watched his mechanical movements also in the raid two, like the raid oh, two yeah. has an amazing fight scene in it that's pretty much a single tracking shot. Yeah. And then old boy, the famous, uh, ha- not the new one with Josh Brolin, but the original one, mm-hmm. they have that famous hallway scene where he's beating the fuck out of these guys with a hammer, and uh, it's all in one shot. Daredevil. It oh Daredevil too. Yeah, Daredevil. Unbelievable. The staircase. <laughs> the staircase. You all see the his hallway fatigue. Fights. Yeah, Come you, into, oh, yeah. like halfway and he's dying. Oh yeah, How especially that said? second episode of the first season. I can watch that over and over again. <laughs> yes. Like the fact that like he gets thrown into a wall and you can just see him getting up, and then he musters up enough strength to do that one shot. But it's so far away that you see it all evolve. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's I'm I'm glad that it's happening because it's yeah. so much more fun to watch. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So that's the thing I've been holding in my notes forever. That surprised I keep thought it was bigger. But that's um, good. Fox is dead. Yeah, and by Fox is dead. Twentieth uh, Century Fox is being turned into Searchlight. Yeah, is that a good thing? Should that be a good thing? Well, it depends because like, so they're trying to separate from Fox News mm. and Fox related material outside of the scope of what Disney acquired. Yeah, and so Searchlight Pictures presents the film will be the first Searchlight release, which went downhill apparently with Julia Louis Dreyfus and Will Ferrell. So. They're getting rid of Fox. They're turning it into Searchlight. Um, yeah. And, yeah, that's... I think the scary thing is is that Disney is going to take over the world along with Google and some other stuff. Yeah. yeah. They're going to be they're gonna be the overlords, and they're just going to change whatever. Because they never got Fox News with the acquisition. Mm. But, man, they're going to town. They're putting their mark on shit. I, just don't want, I don't want Disney to take over the token franchise. I, I I am glad Amazon has it right now, right? You know, with what they're doing, I you know, but oh, yeah. If it was Hulu, it'd be different because with the Fox acquisition, Disney does have a stake in Hulu. Do so they? It, yeah, <laughs> it was a big. They like, got their they got finger in lot. everything, dude. It's crazy. Oh yeah, it's no surprise where they have. What is it? There's a pic. There's a comic strip, not a comic strip, but a, a painting someone did of Mickey Mouse on top of a hill, like Scar from. The Lion King, oh, no, <laughs> yeah. like, be prepared, and it's all other clone mice yeah. doing like the goose stepping. Yeah, like there yeah, are yeah. overlords, and they're gonna take over the <laughs> fucking show. Or man. the Thanos one's good too, where he has the Infinity Gauntlet. But, but it's yeah. like Mickey. I didn't see that. Oh, you haven't seen that? I don't have the chive, and you sent it through the chat. 
Uh, it's it's been on the internet. It's not only on the chive. It's been in other places. But yeah, he basically has the gauntlet, and then he has all like the other like Fox twentieth or wherever else, like Marvel, Star Wars. I don't know yeah. how. What, just well, waiting how... for Disney to snap its fingers, right? Yeah, basically, yeah, and wipe everybody the fuck exactly. out. Exactly. Yeah. Um, no one knows yet if they're going to change the fanfare. So you know when Fox starts like, dun, 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 yeah, dun, it's dun, true. Dun, dun. So they, I I hope they keep it because. You know, it's pretty iconic. It's iconic. Yeah, yeah. people yeah. know that. People recognize it, and no one really knows how far they're going to go with it. But um, that was super interesting. Hmm. And I guess speaking of movement, wasn't that what was that one with Seth MacFarlane? He left Fox and went to NBC. Yeah. So basically, Fox acquired him. So basically, Disney acquired him. Mm. Yeah, to bring his show over to there, like him and his show is coming over to Fox, I guess, not NBC. Which show? Family Guy. So I, I think he's not even a part of that anymore, though. Like, oh, he, like yeah. his name's in it, but like, no, oh, he's yeah. still acting, man. He's still, still the voice actor. Oh yeah, okay. he's still the voice actor okay. for everything. Okay. Okay. So this is this is from hmm. where is this from? I think so. Anyway, no, it probably it wouldn't make sense for like part of Seth MacFarlane's genius is also what he gets to do with Family Guy. So anyone taking him, like Fox acquiring him or Disney acquiring whatever you want to say, um, they better give him what he wants to do. Because it's kind of funny, even in an age where everyone gets kind of offended by everything, Family Guy gets to do whatever they want with impunity. So Family Guy is still on Fox and MacFarlane will continue to work with them. There you go. Um, the Orville for Hulu and American Dad for TBS. So he's still going to be jumping around. Mm-hmm. Um I guess what this is going to be, so NBC lured McFarlane away from Fox with a lucrative pay package. It'd be like a two hundred million dollar deal over five years, um, forty million a year. I mean Fox. I'm sorry, little, from NBC. Yeah, from NBC. Yeah, with the two hundred million. Mm. And then the terms of contract are that McFarlane will make all kind of new content for NBC through his Fuzzy Door Productions, um, while staying a free agent for any movie deals. He's reportedly making. He's going to make musicals, political dramas, historical anthologies, and animated shows for NBC, which then might be sold to outside companies like Netflix. You mean for Fox, or is he still part no, of no, NBC? No. He's. This is all under NBC. Oh, okay. the only thing he's sticking with Fox is Family Guy. That's it. Oh, okay. Under the NBC deal, he's going to be making new shows oh, for them. Okay. And then they can sell them off to places like Netflix, um, looking for movies as well. He, um, for their sci-fi network under NBC. He's also met with Amazon. He is said to have met with Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Warner Bros., Sony, Disney, and GameSpot, parent company, Viacom, mm-hmm. CBS, before signing, but NBC ended up taking it. So lots of shit moving around. Interesting. People. Um, but I guess everything's kind of staying the same because his other shows are still remaining in his box. Yeah, yeah. okay. So. Yeah. Um, hmm. I don't know. Lord of the Rings has its main cast. I don't know anybody on there except for the dude from the two guys from who played Ned Stark. That was the yeah, one dude, the young right? young guy. Yeah. He's going to be the Benjamin Stark's in it too. Is he? Yeah. I don't know what his for real name is. I just yeah. know him as Benjamin Stark. <laughs> I'm, ba- I'm so bad for that. Yeah, very bad for that. Yeah, I used to be uh, much better, but not but, anymore. But like we said, it's better that they went with kind of obscure and new coming up and coming actors, actresses, that kind of thing. So it's like it gives it a different feel, and you're not you don't have a preconception of it. Kind of thing where as soon as you see a, a big name attached to it, you're like, you're, you automatically expect, have certain expectations, I guess you could say. So the fact mm-hmm. that there's like completely new people, like Game of Thrones, how amazing that was, where there was the, on, the only big name at the time, two, sorry, two big names, sorry. Uh, th- no, there's a few more. I'm lying. Three <laughs> <laughs> Ned Stark, uh, so Sha- Sean, Bean, Sean Bean, Peter Dinklage, Peter Dinklage, uh, um, the m- Cersei. Cersei wasn't that big though. Eh, I guess not huge, but but uh, Callan Stark was uh, McFarlane. Her name is McFarlane, isn't it? Is it? I, don't I know. think I don't know. And then uh, obviously the guy who played uh, King Rob too. What's that one woman's name who played in Three Hundred? She was also Eva, like that's Eva Green. That's Eva Green. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's a chick. Uh, oh, speaking of Three Hundred, uh, Cersei. Mm-hmm. What's her What's her name again? Lena, Lena Headley. Headley. She was Leonidas's wife, and she was in both Three Hundreds. She was yes. Leonidas' wife in 300. Yeah, yes. That's where so I, I guess there's a few from. big names. Yeah. Maybe um, my theory's yeah. a little off, but, but the, whatever. But I mean, a big cast, right? It's there's not a lot the first of time. <laughs> whatever, whatever. Do you know that Viggo Mortensen is the same age as the guy who played Gandalf when The Lord of the Rings came out? Holy shit. Oh, wow. That's how old He's it is. He's the same age now as Ian McKellen was back then? Yes. Holy fuck. Jeez. 
that he's, that blew my mind. It, <laughs> he's still the best. Yes. When, like when it comes to that, like you just never forget. Mm-hmm. Um, Oscars, Oscars. What uh, were you having something? No. Are you sure? Yeah. Are you sure? Yes. Are you sure? Positive. Positive. Hundred. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Just go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Oscars. I am so happy. Joker's got eleven fucking nominations, which is wow. huge. Um, you seen the Joker? Yes, I did. I we loved obviously it. saw it together. Yes. Uh, best picture: Ford versus Ferrari. I need a lot of catching up. I thought I had this locked this year, but no. Ford versus Ferrari. You saw nineteen seventeen. No, I haven't seen it yet. I really want to though. Irishman. I have seen Joker. I have seen Jojo Rabbit. You saw. Yep. No. Uh, me neither. <laughs> Little Woman. No, I haven't, I haven't heard of it. Uh, Marriage Story. I'm going to watch it on Netflix. I heard it's good, but I haven't seen it. Interested. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Have seen it. Nope. Yes. You haven't seen it yet? Dude. Uh, and Parasite. Have you seen it? No. no. Me neither. So that's the one that everyone's super hot on to. Everyone's mm-hmm. thinking that that's going to take it, even though Joker's got a lot of nominations. Yeah. Um, best Director. Tarantino, Scorsese, Sam Mendes. Uh, he did 1917. Um, I'm going to butcher his name. I'm going to try. Bong Joon-ho did Parasite, Parasite and then Todd Phillips for Joker. Best actor, Joaquin. Hope he gets it. Leonardo DiCaprio for Once Upon, Adam Driver, Antonio Banderas, Pain and Glory. Haven't seen it. Neither have I. Uh, I like the guy, though. Jonathan yeah. Price, The Two Popes. Yes, have seen that. And Jonathan Price was outstanding. Mm-hmm. Um, actress, Renee Zellweger for Judy. Scarlett Johansson for Marriage Story. I heard she's like, Really good. Super good. Cynthia Erivo for Harriet, Charlie's Throne Bombshell, uh, Serwa Ronan for Little Women. Hmm. Best Supporting, Brad Pitt, Once Upon a Time. I could see him winning. Uh, Joe Pesci, Irishman, Anthony Hopkins, Two Popes, also really good. Pacino should win, I think, for The Irishman. Yeah. He was awesome in that. Supporting Actress, Laura Dern. Scarlett Johansson for Jojo Rabbit. She did very good, I think. Okay. It was, very, it was a very different... Uh, different role for her so i think i think she's a contender she's got range i don't know if she'd win but she's a she's a strong contender she's got more range than one could like one thinks like yeah she's got more range than i even thought yeah um margot robbie for bombshell florence mm. Pugh for little women and kathy bates for richard jewel fuck there's so many sh- so much shit i haven't seen mm-hmm. but anyways that's like the majority of it um, yeah, for the main stuff, yeah. yeah, I'm looking on this on Collider, which, by the way, there's a lot of stuff going on with this place. So Collider used to have movie talk for the longest time, and okay. they no longer have movie talk. They just up and canceled a bunch of their shows. And <laughs> it was like going on for a long... It's been like a thing in the YouTube sphere for a while. Interesting. Um, which is, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Uh, this is another one that I really like, the category. Cinematography. Irishman, Joker, Lighthouse, 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Again, I'm going to go with my boy Joker, but I also haven't seen Lighthouse 1917. I think 1917 might take it because they're yep. boasting the longest, uh, the, the long longest shot, long shot, yeah, done. Um, if you've seen in the trailers where the guy's running through the field, yep. like apparently that entire uh, montage is done one shot. If that's the case, they should win. Just yeah. off pure. That. Well, Saving Private Ryan wasn't that one shot too? Mm. In mo- so. like when they no. stormed the beaches, there was kind longer of? shots. It, it was, was longer, but it wasn't yeah. one. Unfortunately, yeah. I could only imagine if they tried to do a one shot. Well, if, you could, if, you, if they remade uh, that storming of Normandy and Saving mm. Private Ryan in a long shot, holy crap, that'd be intense, right? Um, Birdman was made to look like one shot. Have was it? Bird, man? I, I never saw that one. It's, man. Out, it's on so good. I love that movie. Yeah. It came out like four years ago now, five years ago, maybe longer. And it's about Michael Keaton. He's now a retired superhero actor, and he's like living as, in a play, or not living in a play. He's he acts in plays and stuff. Okay. And but he keeps getting haunted by his character Birdman, which obviously is a not so subtle nod to his Batman role, and how he used to be the wonderful, like the big superhero Birdman and now it's it's still a part of him that he hasn't been able to let go. Keaton did pretty good as Batman though overall. Oh he was uh, he was amazing. Oh, yeah. Some people peg yeah. him as the best. Was he the one who got yeah. the nipples or was that Clooney? No that was Clooney. Yeah, they Clooney, fuck, Clooney, they Clooney mess, got the they messed Clooney <laughs> up. They got, and and the ass crease too like oh, those, yeah. those buttocks <laughs> super smooth. <laughs> Very smooth. <laughs> Seems like you're wearing nothing at all. <laughs> nothing at all. <laughs> oh fuck. <laughs> Um, did he play with the one in Mi- w- w- with Mr. Freeze, like Arnold Schwarzenegger? That's, that's, that's the yeah, yeah. that, That's not Batman Forever, is it? That's yeah. Batman and Robin. Yeah. Batman Forever yeah. was the Val Kilmer one with um, yeah. uh, okay. Jim Carrey and Ro- uh, what's his name? Tommy Lee Jones. Tommy Lee Jones. Thank okay. you. Okay. Yeah. Joker and the Riddler. Yeah. That one wasn't bad. <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> it was funny, but it's it was, funnier it was, especially. It was it's funny when you know that uh, Tommy Lee Jones hated Jim Carrey. Yeah. Like he couldn't know. stand oh, his yeah. shenanigans. 
which I would think like that'd be the best part. Um, oh, there's another one, I guess, for us uh, superhero fans. Endgame is nominated for best vis- best visual effects. Also, The Irishman, The Lion King, King, which even though that movie disappointed me, had some pretty damn good special effects. I think effects. if you're wanting visual effects, Endgame should take it, in my so. opinion. Think of how much they accomplished in, like with the CGI and that kind of stuff. Like For that technical side of stuff, they definitely set the bar, right? And yeah. how they went about it. The de-aging thing is, is great in uh irishman in irishman and all but i think that one video of the guy in his basement with his like computer rendering yeah, yeah, fakes yeah. or that whatever probably that kill the it program he, i think he ended up just doing his own version of the de-aging and yeah. he ended up doing it better than what was in and cheaper obviously than what was in the movie that might damn them yeah i think that might be the well, i might damn line. them all someone if, I, if no one hires that guy off the hop i think they're they, he's could probably got a job he should oh yeah he's, he's that talented yeah yeah um i don't know anything else i kind of wish that no not original score where's the where's the original joker joker better win the score i i again i haven't heard mm-hmm. the other one so this is a very else is in there for little woman marriage story 1917 and star wars rise of skywalker um, See, Star Wars would just have like the classic. That's not that's John Williams, isn't it? That's the original theme, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. but like John Williams. Other than that, Score, y'all. <laughs> that's what I mean. Um, um, yeah. But I don't know. I, I would say it's a contention between Joker and Rise of Skywalker. I would definitely just pick Joker. The only one, yeah. other one I would say is Portals from Endgame was a, a wonderful score. Mm-hmm. Like that. That that music still gets me every time mm-hmm. uh so that's some of the stuff for the oscars i think they're it's super early this year three years ago is march the first week of march last year was like mid-february and now it's like february 8th like right away oh geez right after a week after the super bowl which i don't know if they're trying to service a demographic that they think stick around from watching the super bowl but i think super bowl and oscars back to back may be overkill. So you're saying the Super Bowl's earlier in the day and then that's at night? No, 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 sorry. It's a week before. Oh, Super week, Bowl is a back week. to back. Yeah, okay, so sorry. that's what I mean. My bad. So Sunday is, the Sunday before that is Super Bowl. February 8th mm-hmm. is, I believe, 8th or 9th. 9th is Oscars. Mm. Super mm. early and no host again this year. I think they would get more viewings if they hosted the Oscars and they had like a sports channel actually. Mm. Um, Nominated? Not, not, Nominated, but like televise it. Uh, but I mean, it's not really sports. So yeah, they would have a tough time trying to swing those together. Yeah, it just doesn't work. Plus, the, I'll shut the up right, now. Get, to get the, <laughs> no, the, the thing is though, to get the rights to the Oscars, like the whole thing is is um, trailers and and space and that is almost as much as what you paid for the Super Bowl. Is it not maybe correct. No, I, I think the Super Bowl though is much more is expensive. much more expensive. Like much like for a ten so second spot, it's unbelievably expensive. Yeah. Also, but the trailers are dope. Most of yeah. the good trailers come out during Super Bowl. Yeah. Uh, speaking of trailers, uh, I haven't seen the Bloodshot trail, the second Bloodshot trailer mm-hmm. yet, but I did see Black Widow two in the Mobius trailer. Mm-hmm. What have you guys seen? All of them. You've seen all of them. Yeah, mm-hmm. I saw them all too. Did you see guys see the Guns of Kimbo one too? Yes, I did. I sent it. We didn't yeah. add it. What was that one? Unreal. About? That looks amazing. That's the one with um, Daniel Radcliffe. Yeah, man. Oh, I don't know what it's yeah. about. Is he in a video game? Is so it like- he's basically in this weird, de- like, desolate world where I guess the downtrodden get put up against each other and, like, the victor always rises. So it's like they basically just got put to fight this person. So there's, like, this reigning champ that just kills these people. So this is what they do for fun, and I guess, in a way. so It's like borderline Black Mirror in a way, kind of. Like, Black Mirror, I guess. And maybe, maybe um, some... Um- uh, Mad Pro- Max, <laughs> yeah. yeah, Mad Max, and the the crazy style of it almost even. I've, it's not the same because that that one, P- Hardcore Henry. Have you guys seen that one? Oh yeah, it's yeah. POV. Yeah. But I don't know why the feels felt the same for some reason, just with the world it was in. But man, is that hilarious? He's got the guns attached to his head, hands. Yeah. He's like, what the heck? And I think it'll be like a funny comedy slash like action movie. I, I'm just gonna have pure fun at that one. Yeah, I don't even care. Like I don't even fun. care what the plot line is. I think I'm just gonna have fun with that. That's one. it. I'd yeah. see that one. Yeah. Um. Bloodshot trailer number two. Did you guys both see that Blood? one? Bloodshot, yeah. I did, and at the starting, I remember hearing that, um, uh, what's his name? Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel, uh, in his contract, he can't lose, right? Yeah. Isn't that in his contract? Yeah. It's so like all his when contracts. he died, I was like, whoa, what's going on here? But then they reanimated him and did it. Well, like, oh, okay, as, as right. the character Bloodshot, or as that 
He's a superhero, isn't he? Technically, he is a kind of superhero. anti-hero, yeah, super that, like, anti-hero. Yeah, can't actually die. He, yeah, he basically can. Mm-hmm. So he's like, he picked the right one. Yeah, <laughs> he's fulfilling his contract. Don't worry, they read the contract. Yeah, but um, he picked the fucking tree that can grow anywhere, and he picked <laughs> this character that cannot die. He's really selective with his roles. <laughs> I want to be immortal. <laughs> I want to be immortal forever. Um, but I know I th- it seems like they kind of listened to the fans because everyone was kind of uh, harping on the first trailer because he. He kept his like original skin color, whereas Deadshot blood, or Bloodshot, Bloodshot, that's it. Bloodshot is actually like pale, and he has the red in his chest. So I think they actually fixed that stuff and rendered it correct. So it looks more pale. I think so. Yeah, okay. but I think it'll be good. I think it'll be a fun movie. You could do that with a dial, just one little dial. Oh, let's just turn it up a little right? bit. Basically, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Witcher season two is coming out in twenty twenty one, so they're taking their time with it. Mm-hmm. Good. I'm. I agree. Yeah, and yeah. and the showrunner, she's got, she's just got like a really good handle on this. I think, like, just mm-hmm. her responses to things, how she's going about it. I'm just like, yep. And she's also super excited to have Mark Hamill if yeah. he is going to be Vesemir. Um, so that's going to be sweet. I'm happy they're pushing Wait, it back. Morbius. Oh yeah, sorry, we forgot the Mo- Morbius <laughs> and, or Mobius. Mobius and Black Widow. He didn't. Oh, he right. skipped over. Yeah, both Black Widow was a second trailer. Yeah. I did. Mm. Sorry. Yeah, let's do that. Mobius trailer. Meh. You don't That's care for it, I, eh? I was just meh. Here, here's the thing. I think it'll look good. And then I got reminded, someone posted the first uh, appearance of Mobius in the Spider-Man. Okay, it is a that? Spider-Man villain. So, All right, I yes, just wasn't yes, yeah. too sure. It's funny because someone posted that little uh, part of, from the animated series, like the original one, Spider-Man. And I completely remember that episode when Mobius first appeared. And I was like, holy crap. I remember this. It's like it's like a recog kind of thing for me, and I was just like, yes. But anyways, going back to the trailer with Jared Leto, I think he'll do fine. I think they're they're trying to stay true to the character as much as possible. I don't know anything about this character. See, I I, know he's a I vaguely I vaguely it. remember anything about him, but it's I like do a remember the white vampire, right? Basically, so. Okay. yeah. So he's he's got the features of a bat more than anything, um, from what I understand. Man, I don't remember that one shot where he did turn around and yeah. he was full vampire. That looked exactly like someone put the side by side comparison to yeah. the comic. Identical. Wow. Everything was identical. And I know I think I've shat on Jared Leto a couple times, mostly because yeah. he was being a bitch when it came to the Joker stuff. Yeah. He's like, I wish they would have let me know about it. Uh, but he is a good actor. Yeah, oh, yeah. he is. So yeah. if anything, and they've got good cast. They got like half the crown cast in this fucking thing. They got the guy who played yeah. Prince Charles Edward Charles. What's her What's her husband? Yeah, Charles. Uh, no, Edward. Uh, no, Philip. Oh, way off. Anyways, I from the know. from the crown and from her dad. the uh, original one, from the first season or whatever. Oh, okay, first season. And oh. then her dad from the first season. Oh yeah, he's good. Uh, but he's also good in so many things. He played Moriarty in Sherlock, and he's just awesome. Well, I saw the Morbius trailer. Morbius. Mobius. Mobius. No, no it is Morbius. Morbius. <laughs> <laughs> we were way. I was way off. Yeah. I'm like, man, I really want them to come out with like a Gargoyles movie. Oh, yeah, that'd be oh, amazing. Dang. Dang. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah, I think th- they Nostalgia. will. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Yeah. Not only that, I know we're, we'll get to the bla- um, the fine. second Black Widow one, but they apparently they're looking at creating a Spider-Verse with Tom Holland, Tobey Maguire, and Andrew Garfield. That is apparently Ooh. Sony's end the game crossover yeah. thing, and they're wanting to bring everything well, together in a Spider Verse style, but in like did you real life. S- speaking, just kind of touching on that, CW when they did their whole the Flash, Infinite on uh, other worlds, whatever. I, I saw they brought that. the Ezra yeah. Miller Flash, and then the guy who plays it in the CW, yeah. and I was like, okay, that's cool. So something like that, like. You can basically do whatever you want. It's a multiverse. Do whatever the heck you want. I think, but that's what they're reaching towards. Like, So yeah. their version of Endgame will yeah. be that, I think, which will be wild. Cool. Um, especially if they're doing the Spider-Verse realm, which would would be cool if they kind of made it, not made it like the cart, like the, the animated one that mm-hmm. came out because yeah, that was like Spider-verse. unreal. Great. But like as they go on more and more Spider-Verses, the animation gets more re- more and more real. Oh, so yeah. then right? one of the last ones, like the fifth or sixth one, ends up being a bleed into the real world. Hmm. But the animation has gone so much that you kind of forget it's animation to begin with. Mm-hmm. And then hmm. I don't know how that would work. It probably won't. But that's that would be pretty cool if they could pull it off. If they pull any of this stuff off, like if Morbius ends up being awesome, yeah. especially tying it in with Michael Keaton's character at the end, then sweet. Yeah. Uh, Black Widow tr- 2, the, we saw Taskmaster more. Yeah. And he's That's got the cool. shield, and you find that there's more Black Widow. So it's kind of basically, to me, it was kind of a callback to like, oh, there's more Winter Soldiers too. 
That's, that's, that's right yeah. away where I kind of yeah. like, oh, there's more Black Widows. There's more of this. So they're trying to take down the whole organization. That's pretty cool. I was never a big like Black Widow fan that's mm-hmm. myself, personally. Yeah. But, I mean, it looks cool. I think she has a pretty rich backstory, too, with how she like turned from whatever she was doing to I being really an event. It looks very Marvel. recent, too. It doesn't... Does it... Is it based in like... like because like I see it like After a 2019 Civil. Mercedes Benz being blown yeah. up <laughs> at some point it's, in the trailer. It's meant to fall in the basically the After Civil War, okay timeline. Oh, okay. you're talking about and him. before Infinity War and before right. Infinity War. And and one of the things that someone had pointed out in a video was that the vest that she wears wears in the trailer is the same one as her sister. Sorry, the the vest that she wears in Infinity War is the same one as her sister's. Yeah. in the one mm. scene. So, I mean. Spoilers, kind yeah, of spoilers. Spoiler. My guess is her sister either gives it to her or is offed, yeah. and so she wears it as like, "This was my sister's, and I'm going to wear mm-hmm. it, and mm-hmm. you know, go marching down." Um, I like this trailer better than the first one. Yeah, and Taskmaster is a dope character because again, yeah. he memorizes and mimics the actions of his foes. Yeah. So then he make he's a very formidable opponent yeah. for that reason like you can't That's surprise him dangerous yeah it's like when Very. tony stark was when uh captain america yeah. was beating the shit out of tony stark and he had to match his patterns yeah, yeah, yeah. so then that's how he was able to like take him down and counter yeah. him because he was able to track that but right. the taskmaster knows it that's okay. yeah, that was a cool end scene how they did that where he got up exactly like her and she realized that she's like what the heck mm-hmm. yeah but um do you i had a theory kind of just thought of it now i'm like you think there's any chance that the family she has there betrays her in any way? No, no, I don't see that. You think they're all they I, all have I, her I, back for sure, kind of thing? It's I, I not think her be. red room family may have like would have been the betrayers if anything. Okay, or she betrayed them because of the red on her ledger, right? Or maybe her sister betrays her. I, that's what I'm thinking. I, I think that could I'm, also be. I'm it. just theorizing that there might be a family betrayal of some sort. So. It could be the sisters. And she might have to come down to like her being the one to take her down, and that's also why she's wearing that vest. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, yeah. It's kind of like atonement. She's wearing, she's uh, oh, yeah, she's wearing the pain memory. kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, because she doesn't have it in Endgame, right? No, you don't. She don't, has don't something know. different, right? Yeah. Um, mind you, she doesn't do too much action in Endgame anyway. So, um, Hank Azaria is going to stop voicing Apu. Because there's some That's controversy around um, the fact that somebody pointed out that Apu is actually bad for the image of um, of Indian people. Really? So he's going to stop I've voicing it until they find a better way to do it. After 30 plus years. <laughs> times we live in. Yeah, I guess right. so. Right. Um, Taika Waititi eyed to do Star Wars after Thor Love and Thunder. And supposedly he might be the one that's going to help bring it back to the forefront. I heard Lucas is coming back. And I've he has a too. protege. Who he like Disney approached him and said, "Hey, can you help us with this like new trilogy?" Because I think Disney came out saying something like, "Hey, we messed up and we're sorry, so we want to do this right. Yeah, we want to do this right." In. And apparently, Lucas's protege is the guy who made the Mandalorian. Hmm. John Favreau. Yeah, apparently. Oh, I can definitely see John Favreau being yeah, like he might be well, Iron yeah. Man the Star Wars universe at this yeah. point, like come in and make the really good one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then yeah, it depends on what Taika. Well, ever since be ever since the Ryan Johnson trilogy went to shit, and yeah. then the trilogy for actually technically J.J. Abrams trilogy with Ryan Johnson in between. No, Ryan Johnson was supposed to do a new, a new set. No, he oh. did. I'm oh. not calling that Ryan Johnson's trilogy. He was supposed to do a new set altogether. <gasps> oh. oh okay. And then the guys who did Game of Thrones are supposed to do another trilogy as well. Yeah, they axed that. Okay. And they, uh, like I said, they dropped both of those, so they have nothing actually planned in the movie world yet. Mm-hmm. So bringing Taika or Lucas back with Favreau. You hear that Adam Driver had to go through back surgery? Really? Because yeah. Of yeah, well, he carried the series. <laughs> hey <Hey-oh. laughs> <Wah-wah. laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Put the team on my back. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, I forgot to mention this before. Oh, yeah. Uh, right after we're laughing, this is probably the worst time to do it. Awkward. But Christopher Tolkien died. Yes, because mm. you were mentioning the Lord of the Rings, and I was looking back, and I was like, "Oh fuck, that was the other Lord of the Rings thing." So his uh, J.R.R. Tolkien's brother, was it brother? His brother. Son, sorry, his son. son. He was ninety-five years old, wow. passed away. So everyone's going to be like, hopefully they've got a good lawyer it's... because everyone's going to be trying to. Well, he's not right. doing like well. Tolkien's Amazon's got alive, something. Right? Are there more people that have rights to it? Apparently, Amazon he's like does. the guard, the guardian of his stuff, of his dad's stuff. But is, there's sense. no one under. There's no grandchild. There's no like the, no one that has carried the Tolkien name. I don't know. 
Maybe. Interesting. Yeah. That's more research. If it ends later. with him, that'll be, yeah, that'll be a mad See, that's dash. where it gets scary. But there's that's already... It's really scary. Um, there's already Tolkien scholars put in place, actually. There's people that Ooh. have devoted their lives to to studying everything that J.R.R. Tolkien has ever brought out and, like, expanding the world and become the ghostwriters and expanding the world kind of thing. I, I still don't think that that equates to the rights to do no. the stuff. Like, anybody but, can learn anything. People are going to Jedi yeah. Master Academies and becoming... But let's say there's Jedi a board of directors to, who do oversee this kind of stuff, so they might have a, not a claim, they might have some rights, they might divvy it out to a proper channels kind of thing, but... I well, imagine there's a plan says. in place. There's no way they leave something so valuable just to. I think oh. all, all we know is we know that Amazon has a little piece of it right now ba- with they, their yeah, series. They have a deal with it, but I, I, there's there's got to be an executive of their estate that will obviously has to take it to a certain thing. There's no way that they've left the mm. stuff to the wind. Yeah. So if it was known that a figure like Lord's, I'm trying to see if there's anything here. Oh yeah. Um, he's the literary executor of his father's. Of his father. Christopher Tolkien had to expose himself many times. Peter Jackson's two trilogies came out, which he had little taste for, with a trial at the end. Cinematic disagreement apparently existed. Um, he condemned a legal structure based around the work of J.R.R. Tolkien to condemn the Hollywood biopic devoted to his father's youth and distributed on the screens. The denial of Tolkien the film was a new rift dug between Middle Earth, imagined by his father, and that built by commercial posterity in which he does not recognize himself. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know what's going to happen with that. I mm. thought there was going to be more to that, but it was just a Reddit thing. Um, I guess we didn't talk about this when we brought up John Wick because my segues are terrible today, but supposedly the spinoff is going to be tied to John Wick 4. My guess is John Wick is going to die in the fourth one. I think he should die in the fourth one. Yeah, This has been like... Essentially, this four movies are like a week, mm-hmm. I think, right? Pretty close. Pretty mm-hmm. close to a week. Yeah. There's no way someone's body can be sustained that long. No. <laughs> this dude's He's inhuman. done, son. So my guess is this is going to be like the Continental, but after the effects of John Wick and what the Continental, like what pieces are left, which I'm all, Interesting. all on board for. Yeah. I thought it was a prequel. No, yeah, no. I, well, I, I guess I thought so too until that. Eventually, they might get to that point where they say the forming of the Continental and the high table and all that kind of stuff, which would be pretty amazing. Might be yeah. a new one. Yeah. Um, Tarantino is not going to be doing Star Trek anymore, but he mm-hmm. is looking at. There's a there's a show in his movie Once Upon a Time called Bounty Law, like one of the shows that. Yeah, yeah. And so apparently he's actually working on a spinoff for that, which I think is so really funny. So is that going to count as an add-on no. to? Ba- <laughs> he won't stop. He'll stop with the movies. Yeah. You know maybe, what? But then he's, he'll continue with series. He's going to always find a loophole. Right? Right? He'll write yeah. screenplays. Yeah. He'll write whatever, yeah. like it's, musicals. I think it has to be an original script, an original idea that he mm-hmm. comes up with, and that's how he counts it to his ten. Yeah. Other than that, he's everything's a bonus. Is he it's at nine? A... He's at nine, right? Uh, yeah. I think, yeah. So technically he's supposed okay. to do one more, which is why everyone said, oh, the Star Trek one might be his final one. And it's like, well, no. That'd be a super shitty last Wouldn't one to it? do. Yeah. I, I, not he's... because I'm not a fan of Star Trek, but no, it's just it's like, that's not your movies, man. You write and do your own ideas. Yeah. Exactly. So I think he'll, he's pretty smart that way. So, mm-hmm. But it's just funny. He always finds a loophole to create more, but pretty smart if you want to just say exactly what it is that original script original thing one off that's how he's counting his numbers so which is why especially now towards the end it seems like he's like pushing it down the road a little bit it's what it seems like but realistically he's still holding true i think to what he said it just didn't explain in detail yeah Mm -hmm. he takes a while to do his shit anyways yeah Yeah. that's why they're good except for yeah um, the Hateful Eight. I did not like that movie. I was I? I tried. Was I? <laughs> um, don't worry that Cyberpunk is being delayed until September of 2020, all you gamer fans, because I'm super excited for it. Mm-hmm. While I'm playing The Witcher again right now, and it's second so awesome. playthrough, third yeah, playthrough, second. Mm. I still haven't played them. No, <gasps> I, I would recommend. Well, I definitely do number three. Um, I haven't played the other two, so who am I to say? But uh, yeah, CD Projekt Red is behind this, and if a company like that who produced a game like The Witcher 3, who cares a lot about their property, says mm-hmm. that they need time until September 2020, it's going to be better than if it was coming out in May mm-hmm. when it was supposed to. I think May mm-hmm. was the day. Yeah, don't rush so, it. Take your time. Take your time. It's not like the movie world where it keeps getting pushed back and pushed back because mostly it's like behind-the-scenes stuff. Yeah. Not all the time, of course. But in this case, when it comes to games, 
if it needs to be pushed back because they got to work on it. Most of the games that have had a shitty history, all they needed was a couple extra months. True. Yeah. True. And then release. Mm-hmm. Hey, a lot of games now they they release them. They release a game in alpha, right? And it's like, okay, well, I don't want to pay eighty bucks for an unfinished game. Mm-hmm. Sorry. And I think maybe the game industry is starting to notice. I think there's two things that they're going to notice. One is that I don't think people are going to be able to pay ninety dollars for video games anymore. No kidding. Mm-hmm. Um, and and they're going to. I'm hoping that the general public, and I know I'm to blame to this, like Star Wars: Fallen Order was a really good game. It was not a good ninety dollar game. Okay, it's a great sixty dollar game. Mm-hmm. Okay, yep, but not a great ninety dollar game. And so they need to start like the technology is getting better and faster, which should mean that they should be getting better at like making these cheaper. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like cell phones used to be super fucking expensive, and now everybody has one. Yeah. Everyone has a smartphone because the technology got better and more efficient, and it was cheaper to produce. There, there's going to be a point with video games where it's like that. Yeah. yeah. At least I think. And then the other one is the whole mobile game industry. Although I play free to play games, I don't invest any money in them anymore. I have like two years ago. <laughs> um, that's shit's got to stop. I, I did think. the same thing. Yeah. Free to play. It, it depends on the game. If you really like it and you want to invest some little extra dough on the side, yeah. maybe it's worth it if it's worth it. You know, if you like it, I would like, say sixty dollars should be your max. Like what you would pay for a triple A game. Like don't make me pay or money. Or a, a regular game. Like, yeah, uh, a console game. Don't make me pay money to proceed further in the level. Like yeah. I'm, I'm cool with cosmetics. I'll pay for cosmetics. Right. Mm. But I don't want to pay like to actually play the game. To actually play it. Yeah. You know. That's good. I think that's slowly starting to change, especially yeah. when there's like laws around that because of the whole fact that it's gambling pretty much. Yeah. Like there's a chance to get these loot boxes. Oh no, wait, right. they're surprise mechanics. Right. That's yeah. what it was. That's what they call it nowadays. Yeah. They're a bunch of idiots. Hmm. Um hopefully people get wise to it. Um, um what else do I have? Leave Robert Downey Jr. alone. No, he's not gonna come back and do Iron Man. I listened to him on Joe Rogan for an hour and twenty minutes and he had a very, very like it was a good talk, yeah. and he like Joe Rogan asked him, right? Would you do it? And he also made points with uh, for it and against it. But he's like, I gotta let it go. He's like, I gotta move on. I gotta like there has got to be there's going to be a or sorry there would have to be something super super enticing for him to even consider it. Yeah. Sure. And I'm I'm happy with that. Because mm-hmm. like lately, this whole week has been like, oh, he might do it, he might not, he might do it, he might not. And then I listen to that interview; it's like uncut straight through. I'm like, he's not going to do it, and he shouldn't, mm-hmm. and he has very good reasons to do so. But I would highly recommend also listening to that episode because it was cool. It was shorter than Rogan's typical ones, about mm-hmm. an hour, hour nineteen, what? hour nineteen. Most of his episodes mm-hmm. are like two hours or so. Yeah. Um, but it's Robert Downey Jr. He's a super busy guy. But it was like a nice, like candid conversation and Mm -hmm. like robert downey jr is a super cool dude um so yeah are you like you guys are fine with that right like we don't need robert downey jr to come back and do iron man no yeah no but unless it was something really enticing or you'd like it and if it actually sorry to cut you no go ahead (laughs) speak um i think it'd be good if there was a point to bring him back Mm. in some way shape or form like it'd have to be like a cameo it'd have to be a vision it'd have to be a back thing Maybe that's the only way to make it happen. They and get make the time thing going back, and they go back in time, and it's like a side profile. Yeah, yeah. but but yeah. not to fully bring him back into the fold, and yeah. like he's going to be in Avengers, uh, whatever they do, forty five. Yeah, Avengers forty five, <laughs> and on Disney Plus streaming. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so it's like that would be excessive, but if it's like a callback, if it's a cameo for uh, that kind of thing, I think it's worth it. Yeah. Jordan. No, he's done. He's doing Doolittle now. He's he's yeah. He's yeah. He's past. He's going to do other stuff too. Yeah, like yeah. he's got another Sherlock coming up, and oh, does he? Yeah. yeah. That's oh, been in the cool. works for a bit now. Um, um, Billie Eilish to write and sing the new Bond theme. Super stoked on that. I am not a closet Billie Eilish fan. I am a Billie Eilish fan. Mm. She is a wonderful singer. If you don't believe me, watch her on Howard Stern. Kills it? Kills it. I'll have to like, watch And it. she looks like she just literally rolled out of bed. Mm-hmm. Her voice is unreal. And yeah. I'm super. She's stoked. got that voice for it too. It's kind of funny like, how, I, I, right? Like one hundred percent to a T. Yeah. yeah, they're paying a good attention to Billie Eilish actually because uh, Vogue has done the same interview with her three years in a row now, and they always have a side by side. Oh yeah, they do. How she's oh, yeah. progressed and stuff yeah. like that. So they're keeping a close tabs on her and well deserved for sure. 
Um, so that'll be very interesting. They say she's the youngest to ever write for one, so she mm. obviously wrote something very enticing, and they really liked it. I don't think she's written it yet. She's going to, or has she written it? So I, I, what I, I saw I, was that she's going to write it. I don't know how the process works, but I thought like um, her and her brother, because her brother is a collaborator. Like he's the guy that okay. is always oh, okay. on tour with her and everything. Like, okay, I think if I can, I, I remember when Sam Smith was doing the one for Sky. Uh, no, it's not Sky, Spectre. Yeah, um, I hated that one. Apparently, I didn't mind it. Not, not the movie. I just didn't care I, too much for the theme song. I get that. I didn't mind it, actually. Adele's is my favorite. Skyfall, yeah. She oh, did a great yeah, job. Yeah, she did. <laughs> so I, I think these uh, these musicians put in a bid almost. They write, they're write. they not given what song they want. or They, they write everything from scratch. It's like you get the title, you get the plot, mm-hmm. make something happen of this. So then they come to it and say, like, oh, we this is our idea and stuff like that. Like, I think... The year Sam Smith did it, someone, some other band, like a rock band, put one in, but they went with Sam Smith's instead. So I this didn't know. This definitely would have fit better than a full band. I like Chris Cornell's. Chris you Cornell's is amazing, name, yeah. But that was really good, too. So Billie Eilish, I'm not sure how uh, the process worked for her, if she just said, I really want to do it, or she had an idea, and she had the lyrics and presented to them, and they're like, yeah, that's the one we want. I th- I'm not sure how I it works. I think because she's one of the hottest artists out there, they said, can you do this? Yeah, I, I would think I, I think it's like less of a, like, of a bid, okay. and it's more of a just like, we want you to do this. Okay. Yeah. This well, is, that's that's, that's good guess. for her. Because they know what they want. Yeah. And for the most part, yeah. reach out to whoever, yeah. you know. And there's definitely going to be a feel to it. And it could potentially be her most like yeah. epic song in, in like the scope of it, because yeah. the Bond songs are epic in nature. Mm-hmm. They've got trumpets and strings, and they've got yeah. large set pieces. I think I was kind of thinking that the Bond theme is almost as enticing as who's going to play Bond for how long, and and obviously the villain, of course. But like, it's it's a character in the movie, yeah. Like it's, it's something that opening credits, the way that they do it, like it's yeah. awesome. That's why Deadpool did it with uh, Ashes, yeah. So good, <laughs> Celine, baby, Celine. Oh, she would be so good to do a Bond. She song. would. She yeah. would. Yeah. Maybe they can collaborate. And then speaking of Bond, um, I'm glad I um glad this was said. So I'm trying to find her name. Barbara? No. Is it Barbara? Oh the, yeah. The producer. Yeah, Barbara Bracoli, who is the E O N producer for James Bond, has said no female or Bond can be any color, but he has to be a man. And I one hundred percent agree with her reasoning. And her reasoning is this. Women are more interesting than to just do a role that a guy used to do. I like that for me is like that is one of the best answers. And we've talked about it on the show when they're like, oh, this person's now going to be gay or transsexual or a woman or a man or whatever. Why? And if you want a and woman then, to play Bond, just have a different series and have it. Double O one. Double O one. Don't be lazy. You know? <laughs> yeah. Like, don't just don't just say, oh, 007, give it to her. Right. Like, yeah. Make an interesting character and people are going to be behind it. Just yeah. because it can be a woman doesn't mean it has to be. Yeah. It, yeah. it shouldn't. But, but in but in this case, like it shouldn't be 007. I'm glad she's the one that's like mm-hmm. saying it because mm-hmm. no 007 is is a man. Make all the other double O's if you want. Females, yeah. but 007 but is then, a man. Then that female would also have to be have the same type of personality. Two, right? Not and that's a different f- number. No, I think they have to basically create a new persona and what this person is. But okay. I mean, there's how many other spy movies with girls, atta- like female leads, yeah. that have done very well. Salt was amazing. Yep. Yeah. Uh, well, even. Um, He's like, there's so many. Salt Scar- was good. That one <laughs> with Daniel <laughs> Craig in it. And I forget. And Scarlett Johansson yeah. was good. Technically, even she's a spy. Technically, you mean uh, the dragon girl with the dragon tattoo? No, Daniel Craig. No, not Daniel Craig. Who's he's the guy the, that played the Witcher Bond. now? Jeez, Henry oh, Cavill. Uh, Henry, Cavill. Henry Cavill. What oh, was his? He, uh, he did one. It was kind of like a spinoff, like James Bondy. Oh, that was like kinda. the Man from Uncle. The Man one. from Uncle. That was a good movie. That there was wasn't great. a female. Ah, uh, she was kind of a spy, I guess you could say. You know who'd be Atomic really good? Blonde was up there. Atomic Blonde was really good. Uh, Austin Lucy. Powers. <laughs> Lucy was really good. Yeah. So there's, um, there's quite a few that they've done pretty well. Lucy didn't do very well, but Atomic you know, Blonde did very. You know who would be awesome is the one, f- the girl from, um, the actress from Mission Impossible. Um, was it Fallout? Not Fallout. What was Mission Impossible? Yeah, Fallout. I'm no. Find it. Rebecca Ferguson. The Ghost Protocol, who, you mean? No, bo- she was in, um, she was in number five. What was number five? After Ghost Protocol. 
Rogue Nation. Yes. Are we talking about Bond here? No, we're, uh, Mission well, just, Impossible, but I'm saying the female actress, female Rebecca Ferguson, she played the female spy that was going against Tom Cruise, and then they okay. teamed up. Mm-hmm. She's real good. She would be an oh, awesome yeah, Bond. Oh, yeah, yeah, she did, she's she's good. yeah. She's a badass. The British chick. Yeah. She would be really good in it. I, I, but again, I just agree with the statement that it's like, stop taking, like, even like with a female character, if they're like, oh, we're going to make Black Widow a, a man, right? Yeah, right. Well, don't. Don't do that just for the sake of doing it. Create another character because yeah. Black Widow is a female, mm-hmm. right? And same with James Bond. James Bond is a guy. There are so many other numbers and double O's that you can pick and make interesting characters. And to her point, she said, women are much more interesting than that. Don't just pawn them off on something that already exists. Yeah, I don't want to see a Jamie Bond. No, there's no, there's no point for <laughs> I it. I don't. Yeah. Jamie Bond. <laughs> <laughs> no, come up with something else and put have their own movie and it'll be great. Yeah. Like, don't just transform it just for the sake of transforming it. And, oh, mm-hmm. this person's a, a girl now. It's like, no, that's that's lazy. Yeah. You yeah. do better than that. Mm-hmm. Um, same with the superhero stuff where they're saying, like, this person is now gay, for instance. Just make a gay superhero. It's not that we'll, hard. We'll piece it together mm-hmm. ourselves. It doesn't have to be said. But well, also, yeah. like... That like, depend, make like, it if it make it if it like works, are you saying it like it should be he should be flamboyant? No, I'm just saying <laughs> like, when they say oh this character who used to be straight and we knew and like in the comics let's say yeah like uh, oh they're Hunter. gonna be gay or like if they did with um if they do it let's say with Captain America Captain America is now gonna be gay and it's like he wasn't then he doesn't like he doesn't have to be make another interesting gay yeah. superhero yeah it doesn't have to be just a a car like a, a what is it. What is it called? Just making another version of that character Mm -hmm. to be something else just because you want to, right? Like, make interesting characters, and you'll be fine. I think Dave Chappelle did, like, a small little joke about that. Did he? Gay superhero. It's like, same hero, new boots. (laughs) (laughs) Something like that. (laughs) I love that But, yeah, no, I I swear Green Lantern, he's, uh, I think that he's gay. Like from the, the original, from the, from the comics. Good, yeah, yeah. Keep him. But that way. that's that's the thing. It's like he can be gay, but still be a superhero. Yeah, like he doesn't have to be like you know. Yeah. Fuck yeah. But I think a lot of times for them to make a statement on things or to to really they feel like they're putting their finger on the pulse of society. It's like no, we're gonna make every character that's a guy female and every character that's a guy either gay or transsexual just to do it. But all they're doing is just slapping that label on an existing character that mm. we all know is yeah. not like that. And it's like. Make a new one. Yeah, yeah. Just be, you guys. Something there's, different. There's creative teams out there. You can make the most amazing character with its own backstory, and it just it's it's theirs. Yeah, doesn't need to be changed. So. Yeah, don't change it with a shitty coat of paint. Yeah. Don't do that. That's that's exactly what it is. Um, do you have to go soon? No, or you're good? Just do what you think. Don't okay, worry about good. it. Um, I don't have that much left. There's a lot of fucking news. There's mm-hmm. a ton of shit. One thing uh, we kind of jumped into ton- the oh shit sorry mm-hmm. Iron Man stuff for Tony. Tony Stark, yeah. Uh, Iron Man VR is also delayed. Oh yeah, and the Avengers game is also delayed too. It's good. Avengers game, yeah. yeah. Have you seen the trailers for that one? No, it's pretty it, good. It, is it, it like looks, co-op kind of, or is yes. it a multiplayer? It's like online co-op, but also single player. And we're mm-hmm. not really sure exactly what it is, but it looks okay. Yeah. A lot of people are putting out videos that were excited at first, and then they're concerned after and excited after. But I'm like, I'll probably end up getting it. I think it'll yeah. be fun. Come it's on, you're just be busting around as Thor. Like I said, my only gripe from the very beginning is that they didn't get the rights to have the that actors who played them, their faces be what they yeah. use. They just kind of use generic, different voices, and that's. But I think it's then, different. Yeah, I think at that point, then you'd expect it to be part of the canon, and you're going to have that Star Wars issue of like, is this part of canon? Is this part of canon? Mm-hmm. Is that part of canon? Mm-hmm. And everyone's like, no, it's not. It's just its own thing. So mm-hmm. you're able to separate that by making them look different, different voice actors. I mean, it's Nolan North and uh, Troy Baker. Like they're some of the two best out there. Mm-hmm. And so, and I'm sure they wouldn't have signed on if it was shitty. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's fine. Let it be its own thing. Um, I'm excited that they're like they have Camila Khan as being like the one that's going to be bringing them together because she's okay. like a super fan, right? Miss Marvel is actually a super fan of superheroes, mm. which makes her character super interesting, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> so I think that's a cool way to go about it. Um, this dude, this is the stupidest thing I've ever fucking seen. Actually, no, I've seen stupider. <laughs> this dude gave a negative review for The Witcher. Again, mm. we're bouncing back to The Witcher. Uh, where is his channel? Andrew Clavin. Yeah, link it to me so I can flag it later. Yeah. 
<laughs> Andrew yeah, Clavin said <laughs> the uh, he calls the Witcher series unrealistic. Women can't fight with a sword. Wow. There's a fucking there are monsters with eight legs and he's drinking poisons to defeat <laughs> them and laws of surprises and like mystical shit and you're criticizing it because women can't fight with swords. So I hate the internet sometimes. Oh. Is people actually have a voice and then, they get, <laughs> and then everyone you really yeah. shouldn't. Yeah, you really <laughs> oh, fucking trolls, man. I mean, most of the time, maybe I don't like I shouldn't have a voice, but it's just oh, like whatever. I, I, it's just so stupid. That's one of those dumbest criticisms I've ever heard. No, yeah. I've heard worse criticisms, but that was a really dumb one. That's up there. Like, yeah, for women sure. can't fight with swords. This isn't like a retelling of King Arthur and his knights. Like, we're not doing a historical period piece here. This is a fantasy realm with sorceresses. That's right. There's a lodge of sorceresses, literally. Mm-hmm. Basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was just dumb. Um, Idiot. Yeah, stupid. And that's why he gave it a negative. Only that. Mm, I, I don't think only that, but no. that was one of the criticisms. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that, that once, you, once you go Ooh. there, at, at that point, it's like, oh, you're dumb, and we're not working off the same playing field right now. Yeah, like, yeah. we decided to play a game of football, and you're out there playing cricket, trying to run around <laughs> to play football with us with your cricket mallet. Mm. It's not how it works, buddy. No. <laughs> what, like, are you, just, what are you doing? What an idiot. Yeah, like, <laughs> fucking stupid. Um, I had one more thing. One last thing, I promise. No, that's fine. I promise. Keep, keep it going. Yeah. I have one more thing after you do. You want to tell do you want to say yours while I find mine? So I, I was just looking, actually, and I came across that National Treasure 3 is a thing now. They're going to oh, make it. What? But number yeah. two sucked so hard. Yeah, but I still enjoy them. They're fun. <laughs> yeah. They're I mean, so, you like the Hobbit. You got to ceiling. learn. <laughs> you like the Hobbit. You don't like the Hobbit, the Hobbit either? No, I hate it. <laughs> don't care. I couldn't even get past the first half an hour of you the first You know the first, first movie is I? It's okay. I. I. No, it wasn't. No, but it's I. I but like the it. other three, I don't know. Just fuck. It wasn't I. No, it wasn't. It was less than I. It was, yeah. yeah. Now I'm too legit. I'm too legit to quit. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm unlegit. Very anyways, unlegit. <laughs> it's being uh, penned and stuff like that. And the guy who did Bad Boys 3 is doing that one. Bad Boys, Bad Boys. Mm-hmm. Which is out this weekend. Is it this I weekend? Yes, it is. Uh, finally. Can't wait. This What's is going to be. This is like my favorite thing. Oh, okay. Um, on the back of something dumb. This is hilarious. Man demands a trial by combat to settle custody <laughs> battle with his ex. <laughs> <laughs> I got to read That's this. Hilarious. This is so funny. Um, a man has asked an Iowa district court in Kansas to grant his motion for trial by combat against his ex-wife to settle a custody battle. This is super funny because I've been watching Parks and Rec. Have you seen Parks and Rec? Yes, yes. Have you seen it yet? I've seen a little bit. I haven't fully and gotten into it. this just reminds you of something Ron Swanson would do against Tammy. Oh, for sure. <laughs> like, yeah. Ron Swanson would sit back there and say, I demand a trial by combat. And then Tammy would just be naked because she <laughs> wants to. Uh, that just reminds you of that. So this David Ostrom guy requested to meet his ex. Or a replacement fighter, and he said, <laughs> "I was going to say fighter." Well, the thing is that you could call a champion, right? Yeah. So that's true. He yeah. said he would also accept her attorney, Matthew Hudson, as her stand-in <laughs> champion. <laughs> <laughs> according according to the court records, he argued to this day, trial by combat has never been explicitly banned or restricted <laughs> as a right in these United States, pointing out it was used as recently as 1818 in British court. <laughs> he requested 12 weeks lead time to either source or forge his katana or wakizashi sword. <laughs> Wow. He said perhaps or no, uh perhaps shedding some light on to onto why Ostra might want to face Hudson on the battlefield instead. The attorney's initial response to the filing was to correct Ostrom's spelling. Surely Ostrom meant corporeal bodies, which Merriam Webster defines as having consisting of or relating to a physical matter body, a physical material body. Uh, he wrote in his legal ap- ap- response. Although Ostrom and potential combatant do have souls to be rendered, they respectfully request that the court not order this done. It should be noted that the, just because the U.S. and Iowa constitutions do not specifically prohibit battling another person with a deadly katana sword, it does prohibit a court sitting in equity from ordering the same. Hmm. Oh, God. He also claimed one party could cry craven and yield to the other, which he accuses legal <laughs> opponents of having already done. Oh, cry fuck. Craven. It doesn't have to be deadly. Can you imagine if she was like a Witcher fan? And she heard, she and she read that comment. Fighter. That guy made a bad comment about the movie. She would go fight he, him. She, she's like, now I have to. Yeah. Respondent and counsel have proven themselves to be cravens by refusing to answer the call to battle. Thus, they should lose their motion by default. The formal couple are suing over access to their two children. 
You know what? I mean, that's a hard flex. That's, you know what? If, if Mr. It says here, uh, there he's ordered as court ordered psychological evaluation. <laughs> uh, when asked by the Des Moines, De, Des Des Moines Register if he was serious about his dueling challenge, he replied, "If Mr. Hudson is willing to do it, I will meet him. I don't think he has the guts to do it. If it's for your kids, I'd play that card. Yeah, <laughs> I would play that card do all it. day. That's so good. That is so funny. And it's with it one of those two weapons." I like, think that's it. He yeah. decided to go with a katana mm. or a wakazashi sword, okay. which I don't know what the wakazashi sword is, but it sounds super deadly. I think it, that's good. If I had the option to pick a spear, I would pick a spear. I think really? that would be my weapon of choice. Weapon of choice. A spear. I don't know if I could go with a spear because I don't know if I'd be able to handle it very well. That's true. I mean, you could throw it. You could use it as like a javelin. You could poke. Mm. Keep him at a distance. Yeah. It's tradi- it, so a wakazashi is one of the traditionally made Japanese swords worn by samurai. So it's not just a katana. So the difference between them, the greatest difference is length. Well, there are exceptions. Most wakazashi feature a blade of 12 to 24 inches, whereas a katana is 23 and 5 eighths and 28 and 3 quarters. And katana Something like long. that features an average blade length. But yeah. I want a katana too. Yeah, I want to have a sword fight one day, but I'm really worried that I'm gonna fuck up and cut my hand we off. We could start start small and get like a a, a Jedi knife. no, like a Jedi lightsaber and start with that. Okay. Yeah. I would like to go get like just a couple of fake swords or those like a full fencing outfit. That and yeah. then just do fence fighting. Because fence, at least yeah. if they hit you, like it's not gonna kill you. That's true, but it's very like bendable and flexible, right? So it's yeah. like. I don't know. That's true. So it might require more control. Yeah. Because you have to control the bend. Mm-hmm. Anyways, I've always wanted to do fencing and mm. archery. Essentially, I want to roam the planet yes. with like a fucking bow and arrow. Yeah, I want a composite bow and just... You mm-hmm. want the composite? Yeah. I would go traditional with like a recurve Ooh. or even just a tr- regular long bow. Yeah. I shot one. Super hard. Yeah, they are. That, Super yeah. hard. That Compound tension? Bows? Scary. Yeah. All right. That's it. We had a ton of shit. Mm. And everything was aight. I, I, I. Uh, thank you for joining us on another week of the F Word. We're going to wrap it up here. George, thanks, man, for coming in. No, thank you. Um, if you're up for it, some other times, if we're short a man, we'll have to have you back on. I had a blast. If that's okay with Vashil. Yeah. Sweet. I think that's the first time I've said your full name. <gasps> the secret's out. Yeah. You can follow me on Twitter at the F Words G. You can follow us on Instagram at the F Word Podcast. Follow the Lazy Canadian on Instagram. Uh, you can follow the F Word on Facebook and on YouTube and all of those fun places. Uh, drop us a line. There's still that thing where if you see a movie that we haven't seen or just have seen something and you want to send us a quick review, you totally can. Um, that's it. I'm G. I'm Vass. I'm George. Yeah, and we're out. Yeah.